And this rather oddly shaped crate is a rudder kit for a Zenith 750 Super Duty. Now this very may well be my next airplane I build. That is why I wanted to build a rudder. Now most people, when they start with an airplane, will start with something like a rudder because the construction method is the same as the rest of the airplane and this gives you something small and affordable to practice building on. If you make a mistake and you have to replace it or replace a part, that's relatively easy to do. So let's open this crate and see what's inside. All right, when you first open a crate, this is what it looks like. Zenith always does a really nice job of packing everything. So there's a lot of packing material in there. Well, and here's the actual part. You can see the skin is here. Then we've got all the ribs and stuff. Looks like we get a nice, uh, well, that's a nice folder for the uh, instructions and manual. Now let's get all these parts out and opened. Now all of the parts are wrapped in this nice thick paper and they have tape around it. And I found the easiest way is just to carefully slice through that tape. Just make sure you don't go too far and scratch the, uh, the aluminum with your razor blade. There we go, see how nicely these parts are packed? We have, it looks like some hinge brackets, this looks like the top rib, just because it's so small, I'm sure that's the very top of the rudder. Looks like we have all the other ribs. Parts really look nice. This bag right here is the A4 and A5 rivets. So these are A5s. The rest of the rivets in here are A4s. I want to show you guys what, what I do on here. These little containers right here are from mushrooms from the grocery store. I know there's a million different containers you can use, but if you eat mushrooms, these are free. So I usually just dump the rivets in there. I put all the A5s in there and all of the A4s will go. In there. Now they're just in these nice handy little storage bins you can put on the, the corner of your workbench. Most of you watching this may be just starting your very first kit plane. So I just wanted to mention the inventory sheet here. When you get a kit really from any manufacturer, but what Zenith does is this is the rudder kit obviously. So they have a breakdown of every part that should be in the kit and the quantity. So it's always a good idea to maybe get a pencil or a pen and check off each part. You can look at the part number on the sticker, find it on here, and then just you know put a check mark or something there if it's there. You always really want to do an inventory just in case you don't have a part. Uh, you can let the factory know and they can ship it out to you. But it's a good idea to verify that everything on this sheet is actually what you have in your kit. Zenith also provides this nice little binder here. And what's kind of nice is if you bought a rudder kit, this is probably your, well, it will be your first part you've bought for this airplane if you didn't just buy the complete kit, but it could be your first airplane too. Uh, so it gives you a little introduction. It goes through some general tips. It tells you about the design and about the designer. Talks a little bit about sheet metal construction, different types of aluminum. And it goes on to talk just a little bit about the kit and what you'll be getting into. And then finally you get to getting started, unpacking your kit. So just lots of good information in the manual here. Eventually the further back you go, it talks about riveting and some other things you might want to know if this is your first airplane. Uh, and then towards the very back, you get these wonderful, wonderful drawings. These tell you every part. It just tells you a lot of information you want to know, like what kind of rivets to use. So if you are just getting started, before you start playing with airplane parts, it might be better 
to at least get a little familiar with the, the, the manual, the construction method, uh, methods, and the plans in the back. It just gives you a little heads up on what you're doing. But these are all of the parts that come with the rudder kit. It's hard to believe just those few parts, well, and those skins that are leaning against the wall. But it's, it's kind of amazing that just these few parts will build a complete rudder for an airplane. So before you get started, one of the things you might want to do is just run your fingers over these holes because most of them do not need deburred according to Zenith, but every once in a while you'll come across one like this one where you can feel a little bit of a burr. Now when you do come across a hole that you can just feel a little bit of a burr on, there's different ways to deburr it. I have this little deburring tool right here which just has a little sharp bit on the front and it's made to spin. And all you do is you very lightly put it in the hole and just spin it. it you don't want to you don't want to countersink the hole, but just very lightly, if I can do it on a, when you can actually see, there we go, just, just takes one turn, and now that hole will be perfectly smooth. So you might want to go through all of your parts and run your finger gently over it and see if there's any holes that feel like they might need deburred. All right, one other thing I want to mention about prepping your parts is if you run your fingers along the edges, the CNC machine does a real nice job of cutting these out, but sometimes you'll feel, just like the holes, you'll feel kind of a little burr on that edge. So what I like to do is I just take a 400 grit sandpaper, or actually this is 320 I think, 320 works, and I just go over the edges. And what I do is I make sure I get this edge, the top edge, and the corner. So I kind of take the sandpaper and round it like that. So I'm getting kind of the back corner, then flat, and then kind of the front corner. And that just makes this super, super smooth. All right guys, I realize a lot of the things I show you are not required to be done, but if you follow it along on my Blue Angels Cruiser, you know that I'm kind of anal about just doing everything. And you'll notice on these uh, attach brackets here, it's got a real nice 90 degree corner. I don't like 90 degree corners because it can scratch your finger and theoretically they say 90 degree corners can lead to stress fractures. So what I'm gonna do is just, I round every corner, even on all the L angles in the airplane that you'll discover later. Uh, I always round the corners, and I'll show you how I do that now. All I do is I take a file, and I just go over that corner a few times, and just slightly round it. Then I hit the corners just to remove the burr, and what you're looking at now, I don't know if you can even tell in the camera, but it's just a real real slight curve, it's nice and smooth, as opposed to the sharp 90 degree curve on here. Only takes a few seconds to do. All right guys, I think we are ready to build. Now for this video, I'm only gonna take you through the building process of the skeleton for the rudder. Once it comes time to rivet on the skins and finish it up, go ahead and log on to Zenith's YouTube channel where they post videos from the online virtual workshop that they hold. What I did for my build is I just set up the camera and let it record the whole thing and then I edit it down for you. But I built this rudder during the virtual workshop that Zenith holds. Uh, it's a really good way to build a rudder. You can watch a lot of other people build at the same time. And Roger and the whole staff at Zenith are also available during the workshop to answer any of your questions you have. I'll go ahead and see if I can put a link down below to that video. Well, this is where I just set up a camera during the live Zenith rudder workshop. Just following step one and two of the instruction manual, I already have the hinges, or the hinge brackets, Clico on with the black rivets. Now I'm just putting in the spar doublers. There's a left and a right. And what's really nice is the way Zenith designed this is you can only put it on one way. You can't put these on the wrong way or the holes just won't line up. 
So once you get it in, go ahead and put on a few, or in a few rivets. After the rivets are in, the first thing I'm going to do is rivet on these hinge brackets. These are the A5 rivets. And you'll notice I'm using the pneumatic air riveter, but I can't get it on the end rivet because it the riveter itself is too big and hits the flange on the spar. So I'm using the handheld squeezer for these outside rivets. Once the outside rivets are in, I can remove the black Clecos and put in the other four rivets for the hinge brackets and then that part is all done. It's always a good idea to keep track of where you're at in the instruction manual and in the manual they give you a little space or a little box to put a check mark after you have accomplished that step so that you know when it's done. Here's the last four rivets on the hinge bracket. That's it. First step building the rudder is done. So the first step was to rivet on the hinge brackets. I believe the next step after that is to rivet on the spar doublers that we clecoed on to each side of the main spar. So you can go ahead and insert all of the rivets. It's easier to kind of put all the rivets in and then go and pull them after they're all in. And you notice sometimes as Zenith mentions, a rivet won't go in the holes. The holes need to be cleaned up just a little bit. Sometimes it's due to a burr on the rivet. So if you can't put it in the hole, you can try a different rivet and a lot of times it'll actually go in. But if not, just take a drill bit and carefully go through the holes. The idea isn't to really open the holes and drill the, the holes larger. It's just to clean them up a little bit so that you can push a rivet through the hole. The fun part is actually squeezing all the rivets. Always look at your rivet gun and make sure you have the correct tip in it for the rivet you're using. There's a different tip for the A5 rivets than there is for the A4 rivets. So it might be a good idea to always check to make sure you have the correct tip inserted into your rivet gun. You'll notice what I do is I start in the middle of the spar and work my way outwards towards the top and to the bottom. So I just work my way to the top and now I'm back on the bottom going from the middle towards the bottom. Now don't forget we have Clecos holding in those spar doublers. So now once all the rivets are in, you can remove the Clecos and put rivets in those holes. Now after that is done it's time to start adding the ribs. This obviously is the bottom rib and really make sure you pay attention to your plans and your instruction manual to put these on correctly. You'll notice that all the flanges go down on all of the ribs except the very bottom rib. Those flanges go up. Again, don't forget to reference your manual, follow along, and put a check mark next to the steps that you have accomplished. Well, the last rib to install is this nose rib. Once this gets clecoed on, it's time to rivet all of the ribs.
Well, after you finished riveting on the nose rib, congratulations, you have finished a skeleton for a Super Duty rudder. And then don't forget, once you're done, put a little check mark on that step in the manual and you're ready to move on. Okay guys, hopefully that video was helpful to you. Again, if you wanna see the rest of the rudder build, go ahead and log on to Zenus video where they film the virtual workshops that they hold. Now, before you go, I'd like to ask you to do me a favor. Leave a comment below because I want you to answer this question. How many of you guys would be interested in seeing on this channel a complete build of the Zenith 750 Super Duty? And I'm talking from opening the crate all the way up to the first flight. What I envision is a very detailed kind of instructional video on how to build the airplane where we would talk about everything from workshop setup, the tools required, how to use some of the tools, and then some of the techniques for building the airplane. If that's something that's interesting to you guys, please leave me a comment below and let me know. Also, leave a thumbs up if you don't mind because that really does help the channel to grow. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you again on the next video.